Welcome to episode 27 of the Automation Podcast, brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm Sean Tierney, your host, and on today's show, we're going to talk about Logic's data logging options. I get asked quite a bit, hey, what's the best way to do data logging with a compact logics or a control logics? And, you know, there's so many different options. Let's just go through a bunch of them here today. You know, Iris Logics 5000 includes a great little trend utility. And that trend utility can be used to uh, save data out to a CSV file. But I don't know that I'd call it data logging per se. It has some drawbacks. So if we take the Iris Logics 5000 trend out of the picture, what are some of the other things we can do? Well, the first and maybe the cheapest option is to use the sample code that comes with RS Logics 5000. This code is designed to log data from your Logics controller to the non-volatile memory. In other words, the compact flash card or the SD card. Now, this sample code titled CF Read Write Example can be found in your RS Logics 5000 Projects Samples ENU. Rockwell Automation, and then whatever version you're working with. In this case, version 16 is the first version it came out with. And there's also a manual on how to use the sample code at ab.com. The part number of that manual is logics-ap007. So if you search ab.com for that, you'll see it's pretty extensive, this manual they wrote up for the sample code. Now, the problem with the sample code is I think it's really designed to be like more for recipe storage and retrieval because the file you get is like a binary file. It's not human friendly, human readable. If you have numbers logged to it, yeah, you can see the numbers, but they're not, it's nothing like a CSV file. So for that, Rockwell actually released a few years ago, a new sample code. Actually, this time it's released on the sample code.rockwellautomation.com website. And this sample code does log to a really nice CSV file. So it's something you can open right up into Excel and, you know, get what you expected, right? Columns and rows of numbers. But it's not as refined as that CF read write example we just talked about. It's really more of a proof of concept. Um, I traded some emails with the developer and he actually just updated it. I haven't had a chance to to look at the update. But um, it's something that you're probably going to have to invest some work in. Okay, so moving on from using sample code in the PLC to write to the compact flash or SD card, I think the next option would be for those of you out there who like uh, writing code in Excel and are very familiar with VB, the next thing I would recommend would probably be RS Links Classic. Now, RS Links Classic has some Microsoft Excel VBA examples in the help file. They're very easy to use. You drop a button in Excel and it, you can paste a code in there and you can read a bunch of tags or write a bunch of tags to and from the PLC. The downside of doing this, though, is first of all, you're going to own that code. And second of all, if you're trying to create a report that fills up over time, you know, not doing a, you know, a data table read or write, but you're trying to build a report over time, like for a, a, a utility or for a governmental agency then you're going to be writing a lot of Visual Basic script. So I really wouldn't recommend RS Links Classic unless you're just doing a bulk read or a bulk write. Um, otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot of time in Visual Basic. So the next option is a plugin for Excel, and it takes care of all of the uh, the stuff you would end up doing in VB. So you still need RS Links Classic, but this next product, Excel Reporter, actually automates the process of getting the data from the PLC, from RS Links, into Microsoft Excel. And it makes some really beautiful reports. It's very powerful. The people at SciTech who make this product are very helpful. And, you know, they'll sit down and do a webinar with you if you want to see how it works. Um, it's just a great product. Now, the only downside here is cost, right? So this product, I'm just going to say roughly about $1,200 plus 100 bucks for a copy of Excel. So you're looking at about 1300 bucks, and then you need a copy of RS Links, the lowest cost version of which is probably around 500 bucks for a single PLC version or a thousand bucks for unlimited PLCs. Um, so you're, you're looking around the $2,000 mark here to use this solution, but it is a solution that you could train somebody on. It wouldn't be custom code and it gives you some great reports. If you like your reports in Excel, then that's one definite way to look at. Okay, next up would be using a SCADA platform like Factory Talk View Site Edition or RS View 32. 
Both these products have extensive data logging capabilities. And that means to say that both of these can log to 20 different databases at a time, and each of those data logs can have up to 10,000 tags in them. So you can collect a lot of data with a SCADA package. And they also have built-in trending too, so you can trend all the data you see. So they're definitely good options. Again, SCADA packages usually start around $2,000, so that's for a developer and a runtime. Um, maybe you can get RSV32 a little bit less. That's a legacy product, and you're not going to be running that on a 64-bit operating system. If you do Factory Talk View, then that's going to be a little bit more to get started with that. But, um, you know, if you want to do data logging, SCADA packages do it very well. Now, I just want to throw out another note here. If you happen to have a PanelView Plus 6 or a PanelView Plus CE, they come with a great little ActiveX, the Data Store ActiveX or Data Store Plus ActiveX. And uh, that does a great job logging the CSV files. So if you don't want to go all the way to SCADA and you already have an existing PanelView Plus CE or PanelView Plus 6, then you have a free CSV data logger built into it that works really well. All right, so the last option here in the list uh, after we go past SCADA would be a full-blown plant historian, all right? So to get started with the Factory Talk Historian Site Edition, you're looking at about $4,500. Um, the good news is it comes with all the drivers you need. It also comes with a web server, and it comes with one reporting client. So with this package, you can data log 250 tags or addresses from your PLC for pretty much ever into a data store which you can use the web server and the reporting tools to export to Excel either automatically or on demand. And the web server is pretty nice too. You only get one client for the web suite, but uh, it's extremely powerful. The trending tools, the web interface, the reporting options, it's a whole very, very powerful suite. And even now it includes a Windows 8 uh, app for tablets. Uh, to give you like a dashboard. So um, Historian, even though it's $4,500 and, and that only gets you 250 tags or PLC addresses, it's an extremely powerful solution. And uh, if you're interested in that, you can just call your local Rockwell representative and they'll give you a demonstration of it or a WebEx of it. On the downside, this option requires Microsoft Windows Server 2008 R2. So yeah, and you're probably looking at a couple grand for the minimum server you're going to be able to buy that would run Historian. And then the Historian package itself starts at $4,500. So they even start with this, uh, this solution. You're probably looking at $7,000, but you're going to get an industrial ready solution that's scalable and could serve up uh, data from your entire plant to dozens or hundreds of clients. I mean, this package is used in some of the largest manufacturing facilities in the world and uh, is based on the Pi Engine, so it's uh, the largest installed data collection software in the world. And that's it for all the data logging options I could think of for our compact and control logics. I mean, maybe someday, post version 24, they will build data logging into the controller like they promised a couple years ago. But until that time, these are some options you can use to data log data from your compact logics and control logics processors. And that's it for this episode of the Automation Podcast. If you have any questions, comments, corrections, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to share them with us by leaving a reply to this episode's blog post at theautomationpodcast.com. And you can always stay up to date with all the Insights websites by visiting us at insightsandautomation.com. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and until next time, peace.